Twitch is the largest streaming platform in existence, valued at roughly $4 billion that has thrived during the pandemic, owned by one of the world's richest people, Jeff Bezos. Despite all that, the company has been plagued with issues over the last few years with allegations of widespread corruption, failing to listen to its community's feedback, and not implementing essential law-abiding systems to protect its partners. This is the story of how Twitch became a $4 billion failure. Twitch has been a platform that's been plagued by very odd bands that have ruined lives. And on Twitch TV, the moderation is a joke. You know, you go to the website, somebody commits, you know, a pretty big felony on there. 24-hour ban if they beg for it. They promise all of this great moderation and to stick to the rules and to be fair, and then they don't do it. So, why should we trust what Twitch has to say this time around? Up until 2017, Twitch was almost exclusively a platform for streaming games such as League of Legends, Counter-Strike, and Minecraft. In March of 2017 though, this began to change as Twitch introduced the IRL category, allowing people to stream themselves in their daily life, either going out to places or just chilling at home, chatting with their viewers. In 2018, this was changed, so the IRL was more of an umbrella term than a category, such as ASMR, travel and outdoors, or talk shows and podcasts. Some users took this opportunity to present themselves on camera in sexually implicit ways, revealing large amounts of cleavage and um, exercising. Back in late 2017, these women were called Twitch Thoughts, and many in and around the Twitch community discussed their dislike for this type of content on the website, but it was blatantly and obviously sexual. I mean, the worst thing about it is as well, a lot of people are just gonna pin it on the subsections like creative and IRL, but this is even just straight up leaking into the main Twitch gaming section. I mean, you could just see with this clip, look how small the screen is for the game, Jesus. Twitch's rules did not allow for sexual content on the website, but failed to take down many of these streamers. This caused frustration within the community as to many it seemed as though Twitch was actively ignoring concerns and was unfairly enforcing its rules. To me it's sad, but I don't really have a problem with the streams themselves. I don't think they're quality content or anything, but people are going to like different things and that's something everyone has to accept. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is the Twitch staff when it comes to this. They have this rule, they should at least be commenting on it. If they truly believe that these aren't overly sexual, they should explain why they're not. It was around this time that many people such as Destiny stated that Twitch needed to make a decision about whether or not it wanted sexual content on the website. And if it didn't, it had to start enforcing the rules much more accurately. So the problem is that Twitch needs to make a very clear statement going forward where they either A, say, well, listen, there are forms of sexually explicit content that will allow on certain sections of the site and we're going to upgrade the TOS to reflect that. Or B, they clarify, we are going to enforce our TOS stricter. We're going to be more clear on our guidelines and then certain streamers like you or Amaranth or whatever would be told like, okay, well, this type of content, we don't necessarily want this on the site anymore, so it has to change. And then you go forward from there. But I feel like Twitch like wants to have its cake and eat it too, where it sits in this weird gray area and it doesn't really enforce the TOS, except it kind of does it, but in a really inconsistent way. In February of 2018, Twitch made a comprehensive update to its community guidelines, adding new details on sexual content as well as harassment. They made it clear that contexts such as stream titles, camera angles, emotes, panels, attire, and overlays would be evaluated to decide whether the content is intended to be sexual or not. They added that body painting, dancing, and other creative activities that do not violate our policies are welcome on Twitch, but also that attire should be appropriate for a public street, mall, or restaurant. At the time, some thought that it was possible that these women were sending nudes or even having relationships with Twitch employees so that they didn't get banned. Pink Sparkles admitted to Destiny that she had several conversations with Twitch staff where she was told that what she was doing was a bannable offense. One time they actually told me that I'm not allowed to do squats for bits, which to be fair, perfectly honest, I don't really understand that because I'm allowed to do squats for subs. I have a, a fucking like one hour 
conversation with this guy. I'm not going to say which staff, mm -hmm. but like he told me like, if you keep doing this, <laughs> you will be perma banned eventually, you know? Amaranth went on to say that Twitch staff threw her reports in the trash. And at the time, it was a big meme on Reddit that Hassan, one of the Twitch employees, was a big fan of a lot of these girls. Report stream, balls. You know those reports go in the trash, right? Twitch staff told me so. Just saying. Thank you, Gal Gadoosh, for being honest with all of us here. This stream has a dedicated ass cam and vagina cam. I don't know how you could possibly defend this not being overly sexual. Even she seems to realize it is, but knows that there's not going to be any repercussions because Twitch staff likes her and they jerk off to her streams. I've mentioned Hassan before because he's the most famous example of the Twitch staff favoritism. His old following list was nothing but titty streamers for the most part, so I imagine he had like eight different monitors, each with a different titty stream up, just taking it all in and enjoying his masturbatorium. There was little else to substantiate these allegations of corruption within the Twitch, and the matter was left as a meme or unproven theory. One of the women accused of having relations with Twitch staff in the past was Alinity, whose name is synonymous with Thottery in the YouTube landscape. In fact, I'm absolutely convinced she was the inspiration for the mummy Ethot Wojak. I 100% believe that she was one of these streamers who were using their bodies for views. She certainly wasn't the worst, but she also wasn't too inconspicuous about it either. In May of 2018, she was called a thought by PewDiePie during an eye tracker video, and in response, she decided to coin a new term, copy strike. I just feel like they, they win over me, okay? And they're not gonna win over me, stupid Twitch thoughts. No. S seriously? He just said that? I'm gonna copy strike this guy. Just for that word. Gonna copy strike him. Yo! Can we copy strike PewDiePie's latest video? Like, right now? A company she works for then went on to send a copyright strike to PewDiePie after he had privated the video to stop harassment against her. This automatically put PewDiePie in the right and made Elenti look like a vindictive bitch, even though she says she actually had no involvement with the strike and was joking about copy striking PewDiePie. An older stream at the time resurfaced where it sounded like Elenity married a guy to get into Canada and then divorced him when she got what she needed, which soured her reputation even further. She later clarified that he divorced her as a result of his actions. Either way, her reputation was in the gusser at this point, and she was a strongly disliked figure by a lot of the drama and commentary communities. I think that this was when people really started getting on Twitch's back about not enforcing the newly introduced sexual content guidelines from two months earlier, because they disliked Alinity so much for her odious actions. Although a lot of people realized that what these girls were doing probably broke the guidelines, I think as long as it didn't harm others and it wasn't too explicit, they probably didn't have too much of an issue with it. Unfortunately, Alinity kept avoiding a suspension. Over the years, she throws her cat, no suspension. She feeds her cat vodka, which is very poisonous, no suspension. It sounds like she says the n-word, still, no suspension. She shows her nipple on stream, no suspension. Meanwhile, people like Disguised Toast get banned for simply being called a faggot. As the reprehensible actions piled up and the suspensions failed to come, people became extremely frustrated with Twitch, and in the end, so did Alinity, who gave herself a three-day suspension from the platform because she thought it was fair. One really important thing of note that Alinity says is, if you guys don't like how Twitch handles bans, take it up with them. How are their inconsistencies my fault? And she's absolutely correct, which is why I said she's probably just as frustrated at these situations as everyone else is. We can all recognize that Lindsay gets a lot of unwarranted criticism and insults because of Twitch's reluctance to ban her, when they could happily ban others for far less. As far as I'm concerned, Twitch's direct inaction has caused Alinity a lot of unneeded attention and hate, and they need to recognize that by not applying their guidelines, fairly and evenly, they are unintentionally encouraging harassment against the person who is perceived to have received favorable treatment. There are things to criticize Alinity for, not getting banned is not one of them. Finally, on the 26th of April 2020, following what must have been one of the most embarrassing fiascos in Twitch's history, with a partner accused of having relations with Twitch staff giving themselves a suspension, Alinity was banned for an entire day. She showed her nipple on stream and got banned for an entire day. But I'm not allowed to call someone a fucking sim.
A few months ago, dozens of people shared stories of sexual harassment and assault in the Twitch community, with many big names such as Chaotic, Bedmeister, and Syndicate being accused. Amongst these allegations was one made against a Twitch employee, Hassan Bakari, who had been with the company since 2011. Just to clarify, this is Hassan, the Twitch employee, not Hassan, America Deserve 9-11, Piker. He had started as a volunteer admin, but worked his way up to become a prominent employee in the Twitch community, operating very closely with partners. His self-proclaimed responsibilities included taking action against verifiable terms of service violations, to manage and strengthen relationships with existing partnered creators, and to identify, recruit, and grow prospective creators who fulfill community partnership criteria. On the 25th of June, a Twitch partner video released a long statement describing her relationship with her son since 2015 and forthrightly states that they were dating the majority of that year. She claimed that Hassan often shared confidential information about partners as well as screen shared internal work emails and some of the biggest partners contract. She also said that he asked her to fill out an official Twitch form for partners, which she wasn't at the time, and then used her number on the form to start texting her. It's alleged that he hinted at her getting partner status because he'd get a team to look into it and apparently asked to fly out to see her later on. She says he offered her a Pax East past and apparently bragged that this kid knows how to talk to people whilst asking her to wine and dine. She claims she rejected him. I presume that at some point after this they began dating, as she next alleges that Hassan shared my nudes with my best friends. She continues, He reassured me many times that he wouldn't save or share them. He somehow managed to go out of his way to secretly take a screenshot and the first thing he did was message my best friends. Later in the statement, she says that Hassan tried to get physical in person and was told no multiple times but kept trying. She also claims that on another occasion, he put his hands down her pants repeatedly, which she rejected by saying no. Finally, she says he managed to pressure me into oral sex, and by PAX West 2015, he managed to pressure me into sex. It's worth noting that there are absolutely no screenshots to back up any of the allegations made in this statement, which might have been obtained through texts, photos, Discord messages, or otherwise, and therefore, the claims must be taken with a pinch of salt. Another woman by the name of Yellow Spoon Girl replied to the allegations saying that Hassan also hit on me and asked me to go to Vegas with him after lurking my chat for like a week, whilst another user seemingly confirmed that they too were privy to information they shouldn't have been. Conveniently, Hassan deleted nearly 29,000 tweets a few days before these allegations amidst a slew of other allegations coming out of the Twitch community, which could have been to delete any potential evidence. The story then went cold in the public eye and people began to wonder whether what was once considered a meme or at least a conspiracy theory by reddit tards could actually be true. They also wondered whether Twitch was actually going to do anything about it, as although there was no proof against Hassan, an investigation might find that this behaviour had occurred with others since this one case in 2015. Two months passed, and nothing was heard. Hassan didn't tweet or post anywhere, and Twitch made no public statement about this allegation whatsoever. On September 2nd, Hassan was banned on Twitch, with the company releasing a statement through Slasher saying a third-party investigation had concluded and that Hassan was no longer with the company. To many, this was confirmation that Hassan was guilty, and as of writing this, no public statement has been made by Hassan or Twitch on the validity of these allegations. In early May of 2021, Head of creator development, a nine year long Twitch employee, Marcus Graham, better known as DJ Wheat, had this to say about Twitch employees' relationships with streamers. No old fashioned, I do not. I think that that is a myth. He asked, Do you think certain streamers might get treated worse because of personal gripes by Twitch staff? No, I think that's, that's like fucking conspiracy level shit. This comes just under a year after the allegations against Hassan Bakari, which I think shows an incredible amount of ignorance from a top Twitch employee to call these ideas conspiracy shit. In December of 2020, amidst other community guideline changes that I will get into later, Twitch stated that suggesting that a person's channel is only popular or has not been banned due to sexual favours is now a bannable offence. This all coming from the same company where it's alleged from multiple people that the CEO and higher ups within the company ignored and even joked about complaints of sexual harassment and abuse. A rule like this would only create an environment 
for corruption to happen because you can't speak out about it. Imagine if you are a Twitch streamer and you have first-hand knowledge that there is a, another Twitch streamer that's romantically involved with Twitch staff and receiving special treatment because of it. You can't say anything or your career is over. You are banned. Rewinding back to April 2020, Twitch introduced an updated nudity and attire policy to further clarify the guidelines as well as to combat those users who are skirting the line when it comes to sexually suggestive content. This update introduced some situational exceptions such as breastfeeding, body art, and swim and beaches. They also reiterated that as always, sexually explicit and suggestive content are prohibited on Twitch. In December of that same year, as the weather got colder in the Northern Hemisphere, some adaptive streamers turned to hot tub streams in order to continue their content whilst in colder temperatures. Most people were fine with this though because wearing a bikini in a hot tub or at a beach or in a swimming pool is totally normal behaviour and makes sense. As these streamers started to pick up steam though, some took kiddie pools inside their house and streamed from their bedrooms or living rooms in like three feet of water. Now this behaviour is absolutely bizarre to any normal person and as a result it's very easy to juice that these streamers are very clearly doing it for other reasons. This became known as the hot tub meta. This coupled with titles along the lines of thickest hot tub streamer with water and peach emojis and then riding a banana with your ass and tits exposed as much as possible cemented that 100% these women were selling sexually suggestive content on Twitch. Now as mentioned earlier, in 2018 Twitch said it would look at the context of these streams such as stream title, camera angles, emotes, panels, attire and overlays to ascertain what the intent of said stream is, particularly in regards to sexually suggestive content. Given enough time and training a monkey could work this out so either every Twitch employee is collectively borrowing and sharing the same defective brain cell, or Twitch wants sexually suggestive content on their platform, even though they say they don't. Nobody with a sane brain is saying that kiddie pools in bedrooms constitute a situational exception. Never mind those sane people defending sexually implicit emojis and actions within those streams. Regardless of whether Twitch does or doesn't want sexually suggestive content on the platform, many concerns and critiques of the hot tub meta were brought forward by those within the Twitch community. Some users suggested that hot tub streams have cannibalized the just chatting section of Twitch pushing those just chatting to their stream to the bottom, whilst the hot tub streams were pushed to the top because they had more viewers. This then meant that users not doing hot tub streams lost viewers because new users couldn't seek them out. Another criticism was that it was a bad look for the platform from both the perspective of advertisers, but also new and especially older users of Twitch. If the first thing a new user sees on Twitch is a woman with her breasts and arse filling the camera, it's highly likely that they're going to leave instantly as they assume the website is pornographic in nature. To many in the younger generation, this isn't an issue. To an older one, it might be. And from the advertisers perspectives, a lot of advertisers might not want to be supporting that kind of content or want to be associated with it for a variety of reasons. Many platforms have gone the way of the dinosaur due to their lack of moderation when it comes to sexually suggestive content and many users felt that this would be the end result for Twitch. Another criticism was that the hot tub streams were causing other more reserved women on the platform to be harassed because people assumed that this was the type of content the platform was made for and therefore assumed that all women should or would be doing it. How strong of an argument that is, I'm not sure. Lastly and probably most controversy with those people saying that because Twitch has children as young as 13 that can sign up, that therefore Twitch shouldn't have sexually suggestive content on the platform. This is such a difficult topic because although I 100% agree that parents are ultimately responsible for what their children do and see online, I also understand that Twitch as a company might want to be the type of place that people can just leave their kids on. The question was also raised, what if a 13 year old did a hot tub stream in a bikini? Would Twitch be forced to ban the account and accept that these streamers were sexual in nature? Or would they leave it up since it fell under the situational exceptions category of the guidelines, essentially becoming a pedophile's favorite website? Some troglodytic morons even went and told people to go test Twitch's nerve, which was completely and utterly moronic, do not do that. Whilst all this was happening, Twitch banned Destiny because someone on his stream showed a picture of two women which A, wasn't his fault, and B, was no better or worse than a lot of the content on Twitch. This double standard from Twitch continues to rile up audiences against these women and Twitch creating even more animosity and distrust on the platform. The conflict culminated on 28th of April after a month of heat debating on all sides when Twitch decided to actually stream about the topic, hosted by the aforementioned DJ Wheat. The very first thing that he's keen to point out is that A, hot tubs are an appropriate exception and B, sexually suggestive content is not allowed on Twitch. The good news is that there's a not interested button on the website which literally solves none of the problems put forward earlier because 
Of course, Twitch would find a solution that is completely irrelevant to the issues at hand. He also encourages people to report sexually suggestive content. It's not as if, you know, there's historical allegations of corrupt- That's literally it. That's all a four billion dollar company had to say to the four month long shit slinging fest that divided their community in half. Did they really think the issue was, I don't like seeing this, so please remove it from your website? Because if so, again, this shows how much Twitch doesn't listen to its community and how terribly out of touch it is. The same guy hosting the official Twitch response to a public outcry later said that he hadn't seen more than two minutes of the streams he was supposed to be saying weren't sexually suggestive. When someone brings up why Destiny was banned when he did nothing worse than what these hot tub women do, DJ Wheat joked he probably lost a debate. This really isn't the appropriate time for one of Twitch's biggest representatives to be mocking its creators when they're universally seen as in the wrong. In his own live stream, DJ Wheat is told by a Twitch partner Lycan that there's so much stress on streamers for not knowing what will or won't break the rules, to which DJ Dude, Wheat responds as Lycan. if it's his first day at the Bro. company. The stress of not knowing what will or will not cross the line? Come on. Why would you do things that might get you banned in the first place? I can't reiterate, this is a top, top Twitch employee who doesn't understand the issues at hand, hasn't seen the content he's supposed to be judging, is mocking unfairly treated creators, and now spitting in the face of a contractor who is telling him Twitch needs to sort its guidelines out. Surely this can't get any worse though. Would you want to see your kids watch things from just chatting? I don't know how the answer to that question is relevant to anything. How I choose to parent is is my choice and believe me if you think that's the that if you think that is the thing that i am worried about as a parent you got another thing coming to you you know what i fucking worry about with a parent my kid going back to school and getting fucking shot like who gives a fuck about something on the internet where there's a lot bigger problems as a parent to think about DJ Weed seems endemic of a culture at Twitch of incompetence and ignorance when it comes to concerns and criticisms from streamers and audiences alike. They don't listen to the community, they're awful at addressing issues, they hardly ever find actual long-term solutions to these problems, and then people like this guy go and act as if there's absolutely nothing wrong with the company. To make things worse, Twitch did act after advertisers had notified them that they didn't want their ads on these not safe for work streams by instantly demonetizing Amaranth, who then piped up about it and perhaps to her surprise, I think a lot of people were on her side because the issue was never with her. It was always with Twitch. She calls this an alarming precedent because Twitch can take away your advertising with no warning whatsoever, but we'll get into that later. It was at this point that the corporate machine kicked every Twitch employee up the ass because they realized their revenue was about to be affected if they didn't act quickly. It's honestly so sad that Twitch only acts when advertisers or traditional media get involved, but their actual customers and community they claim to care about so much get shafted time and again. Twitch made another dreadful statement on the 21st of May. Let's start with being found to be sexy by others is not against our rules. Okay, thanks for that completely pointless piece of information that instantly makes me think you're trying to use that as a defense to keep these girls on the platform. The question here isn't over perceived attractiveness, it's over the perceived context of these streams that any normal person would look at and realize what the intent is. For some reason, Twitch seems to think the issue is that their rules are not as clear as they could be. Maybe that was the issue in 2018, but the issue now is that these rules are not being enforced properly. Once again, Twitch does not understand the issues at hand, or they do, but they are being disingenuous to their community. In this statement, they announced a new section for the hot tub and beach streams, which I think actually solves one of the criticisms put forward to Twitch, cannibalization, which is honestly astounding to see. It's a shame that they can't grasp any of the other concepts put forward, it's almost as if there might have been another issue here. Like, I don't know, advertisers not wanting to put their ads on certain content. And as a result, one of the biggest categories on Twitch, the Just Chatting section, might have had its ads pulled. Now, if that were true, it would mean that Twitch didn't solve the problem because it was affecting the community, but only because it was affecting their bottom line. Okay, Twitch needs to make a decision about whether they do or don't want sexual content on the platform. And if not, they need to ban these streamers who are blatantly sexually suggestive. Was that Twitch has no way of categorizing sexually suggestive content. Because even now, if you say, okay, no, no hot tub streams, or we're giving you guys a section, or we're giving ear licking a section, we're giving sections for, they're gonna find another way to do something that's a little bit naughty. You, you just need to give like your mods and your admins power to 
basically label certain channels as sexually suggestive. If a stream is labeled as sexually suggestive and it's something that you don't want to ban off the platform but that you also don't want to incentivize, then channels like that just shouldn't be shown in the discovery, like in certain categories. If there are any of you that are in doubt over whether or not this is a serious discussion, the success of OnlyFans over the last two years will tell you that Twitch has a lot of big decisions to make over balancing the needs and requests of advertisers, as well as the potential revenue that this kind of content could and already does bring in. In the meantime though, those frustrated with the platform's responses, those who don't want this content on the website and the women being left relentlessly attacked because of Twitch's indecision are in the dark. Overall, Twitch has a huge issue with transparency, not just over the hot tub streams. I mentioned allegations earlier that Twitch employees were having relationships with Twitch partners, which could affect their judgment. Twitch never addressed this formally like they have done with most issues via the Twitch blog, instead opting to release a statement through a third party. Speaking of transparency, it's completely bizarre to me that someone like Delor gets a one-year ban for smashing a keyboard against his head, something that he had done multiple times in the past and called an act, but a girl spreads her vaginal lips into the camera and gets a three day ban. An iconic example of not knowing what goes on in terms of bans is the Dr. Disrespect situation, where he was banned with no warning from Twitch whilst in a contract with them in June 2020. To this day, we have no idea whatsoever as to why he was banned and Doc has claimed neither does he. Amaranth was right earlier about Twitch setting a precedent by demonetizing her with no outreach or guidelines or statement before doing so. But the precedent was set with the Doc stuff. Streamers on Twitch are allowing themselves to be rolled over by the company. And now any streamer, no matter how big or important, can be banned without reason, warning, or justification from Twitch. In my opinion, big streamers need to step up to the plate and hold Twitch accountable because as we've seen with Amaranth, they'll only care when it's happening to them. Stay mad. Stay mad, haters. I'm right. I'm right. But I'm hanging in there. And uh, I'm not going anywhere. I have power. They can't take it away from me. And honestly, you know, I, the, the, these, there, there are some people that should be afraid of me. Um, and that they are. <laughs>